Thank you, everyone. So I have the great pleasure today of um, presenting you with an introduction to melanoma. So what is melanoma? What is the evolution of melanoma? The, um, how do we diagnose it? And a little bit about treatment. Um, but there will be other speakers after me who will talk a little bit more in detail um, about each of these. I have no financial disclosures. Um, so, so melanoma. Um, this is considered the most serious form of skin cancer. It's the fifth leading cancer in men and the seventh in women. The American Cancer Society um, estimates that in 2016, um, about 76,000 um, new melanomas will be diagnosed, um, 46,000 in men and 29,000 in women and um, about 10,000 people are expected to die from melanoma. So it's a serious um, disease. Um, over the past 20 or so years, we can see that the incidence of uh, melanoma in the US has risen. Um, but given the new treatments that have come along in the, on the horizon, the uh, melanoma mortality has actually stayed about level. It is 20 times more common in whites than African Americans, and the lifetime risk for melanoma is about 2.5% for whites, 0.1% for African Americans, and 0.5% for uh, Hispanics. And the risk increases as people age, and the average age is 63 years. And there are many risk factors for melanoma, but one of the big ones is uh, sun exposure and tanning bed use, which um, some of the other speakers will uh, go into later. And um, the evolution, so how do melanomas arise? And there is a uh, evolutionary model that's, um, that's been proposed. Um, and in, this is from the uh, New England Journal uh, recently that, um, so we know that melanoma starts from a precursor. And so the cell that, that uh, becomes abnormal is the melanocyte. And as you accumulate mutations in the melanocyte, um, you can, then you get benign moles, you get these nevi. Um, as they accumulate more mutations, um, they may become these things we call intermediate neoplasms or dysplastic nevi. And as they become even more atypical, they become melanomas, melanoma in situ, and as they uh, um, advance from the skin, they become invasive melanomas and eventually they spread to other parts of the body. And so we know from uh, genomic analysis that as, as the lesion progresses from a nevus to melanoma, you accumulate more mutations, point mutations, as well as copy number alterations of certain oncogenes. Um, and, but one strong point is that uh, the uh, mutation signature reveals that UV radiation is very strongly associated with the development of these first um, precursor lesions. And so recently there's a lot of research in identifying what these driver genes are um, that uh, lead to melanoma and metastasis. And so, as melanoma advances, um, you first have a primary melanoma on, on the skin, but, um, and this is in stage one or two disease, but as you get to stage three, um, the melanoma reaches the surrounding tissue, the lymph nodes, um, and as you reach stage four disease, um, you can get uh, detectable tumor in other, other parts of the body. Um, but it's very important for uh, especially melanoma patients to see their doctors regularly because in stage one or two disease, you can see that even as um, there is only detectable tumor in that one site, you can have microscopic lesions that um, have gone to other areas. So it's very important for you to follow up with your dermatologist, with your oncologist, or if you know, if you have advanced disease, your oncologist, and so forth. Um, so how do we detect melanoma? So um, the, main, the main 
uh, way of detecting melanoma is by you, the skin self-exam. So, um, you know, we recommend patients get monthly self-exams and, um, you know, in a well-lit room in front of a full-length mirror. A handheld mirror can be used for hard-to-see locations and it's important to examine all areas, including the palms and soles, the scalp, the ears, the nails, and back. And this is kind of a visual of how that is. Um, and then we often uh, tell patients about the ABCDE uh, mnemonic, and this stands for A, for asymmetry, in which one half of the mole does not match the other half. B, for borders, if it has irregular borders, ragged, notch, or blurred edges, this is a little bit more concerning. Um, C for color, if the color is not uniform and you can have different shades of black, brown, pink, red, white, and or blue. And um, D for diameter, if it's greater than six millimeters, which is the size of a pencil eraser. Or E for evolution or evolving when the mole is changing in size, shape, and or color. So these are all kind of um, red flags for, you know, how to, at least for your self-exam, um, to identify moles that may be a little bit more concerning. And of course, you can turn to specialists um, who can help with the exam. So who are these specialists? Dermatologists, ophthalmologists, gynecologists, dentists, and hairdressers even, because they examine different parts of your body, um, but, um, of course, a dermatologic exam will probably be, um, one of the most important. So when you see a dermatologist, what kind of things can they do? So we can provide a general clinical exam. We can identify lesions as whether they're melanomas or whether they're benign nevi, whether they're seborrheic keratoses or other, um, uh, benign lesions. Uh, we can perform total body photography in which we take different pictures of your body and um, over time we can track these, uh, these moles um, and see if they change. And then we also have a device called the dermatoscope which um, allows us to see um, uh, features that may be more suggestive of a melanoma. And so, you know, we often get patients like this in our clinic who have many different moles on their back. So which one is a melanoma? So we use, you know, dermoscopy, and there are many new devices nowadays with, um, uh, from many different companies. And um, you'll, and we'll see, you know, maybe one of these lesions, which has many different colors, have many you know, features such as we call blue-gray structures, white lines, pseudopods, and so forth. And um, this would be more suggestive of a melanoma. And in fact, this was an invasive melanoma. Um, we may find melanoma in other parts in you know, strange locations on the body, which including the soles. Um, this is a melanoma um, on a sun-exposed sun area. You can see the other lentigenes that are in the area. Um, and a melanoma in a uh, less sun-exposed area. Um, so what happens when we detect a melanoma? Then we can excise it. We can send it to a derm surgeon or a surgeon. They cut it out. Um, and then the uh, Dermatopathologist takes a look at it under the microscope. You can see the clinical picture, the dermoscopic the histopathologic uh, image. Uh, and these were all melanomas. And so um, what are the components of um, the melanoma workup? So the dermatopathologist could detect a tumor, uh, it can measure the tumor, determine, determine the Breslow depth, and the Clark level, how far it's invaded, it can change how we manage the, the patient. Um, there's a NCCN guideline that's published, um, that's updated regularly, that provides kind of management guidelines for uh, what to do in these different situations. Um, the surgeons will talk later about sentinel lymph node biopsy, and this is when you inject the dye into the surrounding, uh, the tumor surrounding area, and see where the dye goes, the lymph node that, that um, will change color, and then you would take 
the first lymph node that changes color and you would take that lymph node out and that, that is a sentinel lymph node which um, identifies where the tumor most likely may metastasize to. You can, um, you can perform imaging such as a PET-CT in this case uh, in this patient who had a lot of tumor all over the body and after treatment with one of the newer therapies now has a pretty clean PET-CT. Um, with some of the newer uh, drugs that are on the market today for melanoma, um, one of them is specific to a particular mutation called BRAF. And some patients with advanced disease may um, undergo BRAF mutation testing. So um, finally, you know, there are many new treatments and um, it's actually in a very, this is a very exciting time for melanoma because not only do we have traditional surgical treatments, but now we have targeted therapy, we have immunotherapies, um, we do have this traditional chemotherapies that we give patients, but the most exciting has been these treatments that have uh, provided durable um, remissions for patients um, for many years even. And of course, there's also radiation therapy that could be provided for these patients.